Business rescue was an unfortunate option that many South African businesses had to consider due to COVID-19. But I mean, with adding the recent civil unrest and looting that took place in KZN and Houting, the need for business rescue for many could be, well, too much to handle and an unfortunate option to consider. Can you talk to me on why it could become just this, you know, too much to handle and perhaps just give me more insight into why this is a, a bigger problem than what people are aware of? I think the, the, the first issue is that one mustn't see business rescue and the business rescue process as the problem. Um, the business rescue process, I think, is there to alleviate the problems that has been caused by the pandemic and by the recent riots and the, you know, and, and the protests, because we, we can never deny that our business is, has really not been having a very nice time or easy time over the last 18 months or so. Um, the economy has experienced its most drastic swing in decades after the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. That had devastating effects. And of course, the recent riots and the civil unrest um, also worsened the South African economy. And we know that we're gonna feel the effects thereof for a very long time in the weeks and the months to come. So businesses are unfortunately faced with certain very tough decisions. And those are the tough decisions that is there. And I think business rescue is one of the ways to help businesses to get out of that situation. So, so I think that's the way that one must look at it. And, and we, we can never deny that, you know, business rescue was introduced in South Africa in 2011. That's when it really started. And it was very slow. It was people were very adverse to go to business rescue. And I think that the main reason for that was this negative stigma that attracted and attached to business rescue um, because of the misinformation and also the failure to understand the, um, the real idea behind business rescue. But one will see that over recent times, the stigma is starting to wane and more businesses realize that business rescue is in fact a process that you use to avoid liquidation and really to attempt to rehabilitate a financially distressed um, company. So, so I, I don't think business rescue is the problem. I think business rescue may be the solution as it may cause or at least present an out for some distressed companies not to go the, the traditional route of pulling the trigger, liquidating the company, which results in very bad returns for creditors. And the most important thing in almost certain job losses. Um, I, I know you said that, you know, business rescue is the, the solution and, and not the problem, but could you talk to me on what some of the, the consequences of a business rescue process are for both the people and, well, the South African economy as, as a whole? I mean, obviously, we're, we're bound to see an increase in the amount of companies that will be um, going down this route. What can we, we expect to see? Yeah, I think we will. This is one thing that we suspect is the uptake in business rescue filings. So to give you a very broad overview of what the process entails, the moment that a company is financially distressed and the Companies Act provides a definition of what financially distressed means. And financially distressed has got two definitions. It is whether or not there is no reasonable prospect that the company would be able to pay its debts as and when it falls due within the next upcoming six months. So that's what we insolvency practitioners call commercial insolvency. Or if there is a reasonable prospect that within the next six months, the company's liabilities will exceed its assets. So that's what we call factual insolvency. 
So the moment that a company is financially distressed, its board of directors may adopt a special re a re a resolution commencing business rescue. The moment that resolution is filed with SIPC, the business rescue commences. The most important thing what happens is there is an immediate moratorium on all legal proceedings against that company. So none of the creditors may enforce any claim without the consent of the business rescue practitioner or the court. So that gives the company really breathing space to try and rescue this business. Then the act also gives the business rescue practitioner certain powers and a very important power which the business rescue practitioner has is to partially suspend or amend the terms of certain agreements. So that gives the BRP the opportunity to go to landlords and to say, can you please for the next six months, give me a little bit of a rental breather. And that allows, and it also allows the, the BRP to go out there and find what we call post commencement funding, where it gets a cash injection from investors to try and rescue this company. So, so those are the very high level consequences of business rescue. And I think the most important thing is from a, from a adv advantage point of view is you may after the business rescue has run its course, have a company that has returned to a liquid situation, preserved jobs and can then positively contribute to the economy of South Africa where What's the alternative? The alternative is to close doors, to liquidate. It's the end of the company. The company is dead. Most of the time, the employees lose their jobs. Um, so, I mean, there's obviously disadvantages to business rescue from a reputational perspective. Mm -hmm. And all of your creditors are expected to take a haircut at the end of the day because some business rescues, the creditors will not be paid in full. Um, and then you may have suppliers out there in due course that's a little bit more skeptical of continuing their business relationship with a company that comes out of business rescue. But it seems to me, at least, that the advantages far away outweigh the disadvantages. Relating to my first question, but on a, a more positive note, I mean, can you give me some insight into how a business rescue can help the South African economy to, to actually recover? I mean, obviously, we know that this is a, an intervention to, to avoid the most dire of situations. I mean, and that's obviously liquidation and loss of employment. But what are the, the overall benefits for the, the, the country? The two most important benefits, so there's, there's possibly three, is that you give companies the opportunity or at least the, the prospect of being rescued. So you, you have a process in place where a business rescue practitioner comes in and implements specific restructuring um, processes to return a company to liquidity and to a solvent business. So number one, it's the savior of the company. Number two, that company then has the opportunity to contribute to the larger South African economy by, you know, just being a trading solvent company. You can just the obvious um, advantages to, to our revenue services because you have an operating, hopefully profit generating company. Um, very importantly is the perseverance of, of jobs. I mean, that, that, that I would think is, is, is self-evident what the, what the positive effect and contribution to, to the economy is. And then also, what is something that has happened now recently is you have foreign investors that are interested in investing in failing businesses and businesses in distress. So there is an opportunity that through business rescue, 
we would get more foreign investors willing to invest in South Africa, especially in a situation where South Africa's grading through rating agencies are not that great overseas. So, so I think those are your, your obvious benefits to business rescue. 